على رسوله الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب الشح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل لقدة من لساني يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزير من أهلي رب يسر ولا تؤسر وتم بالخير وبك نستعين يا فتاح رب زدني علما رب حب لي حكما وألحقني بالصالحين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزك قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوحاب آمين يا رحمة الرحيمين Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Once again, today, inshallah ta'ala, we will be talking about ayah number 142, 143, and 144 from Surah Baqarah. This is the beginning of the second juz in the Quran. And first, we will go over the word by word meanings, inshallah ta'ala. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. سيقول السفهاء من الناس ما ولاهم عن قبلتهم التي كانوا عليها قل لله المشرق والمغرب يهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم سيقول Sa is one word here and Yaqulu is another one. So Sa is uh, to say that soon something will happen, right? So soon. Uh, so Sayaqulu, soon will say, who will say? As-Sufaha'u. As-Sufaha are the, mean the foolish ones. Mina nasi Mina from Anas, the people. Ma, what? Wallahum, what has, Walla is to turn. Wallahum, what has turned them? Turned them, An, from him. Qibla is the direction of prayer and Qiblatihim is their direction of prayer. Qiblatihim, allati, that which kanu, they were alayha, on it, upon it. Qul, say, lillahi, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-mashriku, mashrik is the east, wal-maghribu, maghrib is the west, the two directions. قُلْ لِلَّهِ الْمَشْرِكُ وَالْمَغْرِبِ Say for Allah is the east and the west. يَهْدِي He guides مَنْ يَشَاءُ مَنْ هُمْ يَشَاءُ He wills. إِلَى Towards سِرَاطٍ سِرَاط We know سِرَاط from Surah Fatiha A path. مُسْتَقِيم The straight path. The path which is قَيَم On which which makes us قَيَم and on which we stay قَيَم. Right? So here Allah Ta'ala is saying in this ayah soon the foolish ones among the people, they will say what has turned them away from their Qibla, which they used to face. Say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala belongs the east and the west. He guides whom he wills to a straight path. Okay. So these ayat are like the are like an introduction to the change of the Qibla, which was happening from, uh, which was going to happen. The final instructions are going to come. But subhanahu wa subhanahu ta'ala is preparing the Prophet sallam even before that command comes, that what is going to happen when this command comes. The foolish ones will come and say this. So Allah Ta'ala is preparing him for the future and to also, also preparing him to what to do when this happens. And by extension to all of us, when any any change comes. Uh, so, That tell them that Allah owns the mashrik and the maghrib and he guides whom he wills to the straight path. Then I number 143. <laughs> وَمَا جَعَلْنَا الْقِبْلَةَ الَّتِي كُنْتَ عَلَيْهَا إِلَّا لِنَعْلَمَ مَنْ يَتَّبِعُ الرَّسُولَ مِنْ مَنْ يَنْقَلِبُ عَلَىٰ عَقِبَيْهِ وَإِنْ كَانَتْ لَكَبِيرَةً إِلَّا عَلَىٰ الَّذِينَ هَدَى اللَّهِ وَمَا كَانَ اللَّهُ لِيُضِيعَ إِيمَانَكُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بِالنَّاسِ لَرَؤُوفٌ رَحِيمٌ So here Allah is telling us وَكَذَعَلِكَ And thus, 
Uh, ka is one word. Wow is one word. Ka is one word. And dalika is one word, right? Wow, wow is and. Ka is like. Uh, that, right? We say kamithli, like like the example of, right? We, we see that sometimes in the Quran. So kadalika like this or thus. Wa kadalika and like this or thus. Jaalna kum. Jaala to make something. And jaalna we made. And here we refers to the royal we for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if so we made kum, all of you, meaning the Muslims, ummatan and ummah, a community which is wasatan. Wasatan is uh, something which is right in the middle of something. Uh, so the middle community. Litakunu, so that you will be, kunu, to be. So you will be, takunu means you will be. Shuhada, shuhada witnesses. Ala nasi, upon the people. Wayakunu, no, sorry, Wayakuna, and will be a Rasulu, the Rasul, the Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alaikum, upon you, Shahidan, uh, a witness. So we will be the, so the Muslim Ummah is being told that you will be witnesses over the mankind, and your Rasul, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, would be a witness over you on the Day of Judgment. Bama Jalna, and we have not made. Um, so ma sometimes means what, but there are some uh, reasons uh, when sometimes it is uh, it is a not, and one of the reasons is when there's a illa after that in a sentence. So sometimes um, when there is an illa after, then ma means not. So wa ma and not jaalna we made al qiblata the direction of prayer allati which kunta you were used to alayha on it illa except lina alama so that we we can know or we make it evident, right? Allah SWT already knows everything, but Lina'alama is here is in means in a sense that so that we know as in we make it evident for other people as well. So everybody um, kind of, uh, it becomes clear to everybody. May yattabi'u, that who? Yattabi'u, taba'a uh, is to follow, right? So yattabi'u, who follows? ar rasula the messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mimman, from he who? Yang kalibu, kalb, a kalb is like kalb is also used for the heart. But kalb, what does kalb mean? Uh, uh, that why is the heart called the kalb? Because the heart keeps turning, right? And that's why we ask Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Ya mukallib al kulub, or the turner of the hearts, thabbit kalbi ala dinik. Keep my heart steadfast. Don't let my heart turn away, right? And uh, so here the kalb is used in the sense of turning back. So so that it makes evident that he who uh, who follows the messenger from the one who he turns back, ala aqibai on his heels. Even in English, we use this expression: somebody turned back on their heels. It's somebody turned back, turned away. So the test, the purpose of this this change of direction was to make it clear who follows the messenger and who turns back on their heels. Wa in kanat, and indeed it was la kabiratan. Indeed, it was a great test. Lam here is a lam taqid, meaning certainly, definitely, la kabiratan. Kabir is big, like we say, Allahu Akbar, right? Um, something big, right? So uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is the biggest, and so Kabir from the same root words Kaf, Ba, and Ra. So like Kabiratan, certainly it was great. It was big, big test meaning. Illa except Ala Ladina for those whom had Allah, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala guided. Wa ma kan Allahu and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not. Wa ma and not kan will. Allahu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Li yudhi'a. is to let go waste. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let go to waste. What? Imanakum. Your faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let your faith go to waste. In Allah. Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bid nasi. For the mankind. Or to the mankind. La ra'ufur rahim. Is full of kindness. And it is. And he is. Uh, the most merciful. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, and thus we made you a just community, a middle community, that you will be witnesses over people, and the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be a witness over you. And we did not make the qibla which you used to face, except that we might make evident who would follow the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and who would turn back on his heels. And indeed, indeed it is difficult except for those whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has guided. Mm -hmm. And never would Allah have caused you to lose your faith. Indeed, Allah is to the people kind and merciful. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in ayah number 144. <laughs> 
قد انديد نرى وي سي تقلب ذا ترنينج وجهك اوف يور فيس اند يور هير ريفرز تو ذا بروفيت صلى الله عليه وسلم سو اند الله سبحانه وتعالى سينج وي سي يور فيس ترنينج في السماء تواز ذا هيفن تواز ذا سكايز فلا nuwalliyannaka and we will surely turn you qiblatan to the direction of the prayer tardaha that you will be pleased with fawalli so turn wajhaka your face shatr al masjid al haram towards the direction of masjid al haram wa haythu and wherever ma kuntum that you are fawallu so turn wujuhakum your faces shatra in its direction the its direction and it is going back to the masjid al haram meaning the masjid uh, al haram the masjid al haram is the masjid around the kaaba in makkah wa inna alladheena and indeed those who utul kitaba were given the book la ya'lamuna surely they know annahu that it al haqq is the truth mir rabbihim from their lord wa mallahu and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not be ghafil uh, is a uh, ghafil unaware amma of what ya amalun of what they are doing so here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us we have certainly seen the turning of your face o muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam towards the heaven and we will surely turn you to a qibla with which you will be pleased so turn your face towards al masjid al haram and wherever you believers are turn your faces towards it in prayer indeed those who have been given the scripture well know that it is the truth from their lord and allah subhanahu wa taala is not unaware of what they do so we'll go in a little bit more detail about uh, these three ayat inshallah taala so first thing is here the ayat uh, last few ayat before this we, uh, we um, in the ayat that come before this we learn that ibrahim alayhi salam and ismail alayhi salam built the kaaba together and we know that before this the the Kaaba was first made by the angels um, the very first time and then uh, by Adam alayhi uh, salam when he came down that was the first house that was built to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this earth and then during the floods of Noah alayhi salam it was destroyed completely and then Ibrahim alayhi salam and Ismail alayhi salam raised the foundations again so the foundations were there and they raised the foundations again and they built the Kaaba and every nabi um, it is said was Uh, aware of the Kaaba and was worshiping uh, towards the Kaaba and first house of worship therefore was Baitullah and um, the temple in Jerusalem the uh, Baitul Maqdis was made at the time of Sulaiman alayhi salam and um, the temple was built so that all the offerings of um, Bani Israel could be made facing the Kaaba from there it is said right and allah knows best and nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam um, before this uh, nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in makkah for 13 years before moving to medina and um, the the practice of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was that until any command came he would follow the ways of the previous uh, people of the book right so until a command came from allah subhanahu wa taala so because the Uh, the people of the book were praying towards baitul maqdis the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would be praying towards baitul maqdis until allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the command to pray towards the kaaba right but when the nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam was in makkah then what he could do was he um, he could uh, he could uh, face the kaaba in a way that he would be facing both the kaaba and he would be facing the baitul maqdis at the same time in jerusalem the uh, masjid al aqsa right so and so he would be facing both the places at the same time and he could stand like that but after they moved to medina now this was no longer possible right because if you look at it geographically uh, medina is like in between so like um, uh, so when he, you are turning masjid al aqsa towards masjid al aqsa you have to turn your back towards the kaaba they, you can't, you can't do that right so and this used to grieve the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam this used to uh, make him sad make him upset and everything and but he continued 
to pray and the Muslims continued to pray around 16 to 17 months towards the direction of Baitul Maqdis. Right. And there was no mention in the Quran or, or the Wahi that had come so far about which direction to pray in. So um, they continued to pray in that direction. Right. And um, in the books of Bani Israel, it was mentioned that last Nabi who will come will pray towards the direction of the Kaaba, towards the direction of Baitullah. Right. So um, this ayah now is giving and this ayah is not the ayah giving the command, but it is telling it's like introducing that the change of Qibla is coming and which is going to happen in the next two verses. Right. So uh, we know that uh, what happened was that when this command came, this when this command came, there was a lot of commotion in the society. There was a lot of there was a lot of scandals. There's a lot of like uh, um, saying things. People were saying things and a lot of hypocrites, a lot of Jews uh, used this as an opportunity to say things like, OK, Muslims didn't even know which direction they were praying in. OK, so what uh, all your salah like you were just all this while you were play, praying, you're praying towards the wrong direction. So all your salah has gone to waste and everything. So um, you didn't even know the direction that you had to pray towards and everything. So th there were a lot of fitness like this, which were created in the society. And one thing is that those people who are always looking to find faults, they will always create fitna on one thing on, or the other, right? And uh, they they would they would say things like, "What kind of a deen is this?" That you know, it, it gives you so many different kinds of orders. One day it tells you to pray towards this direction, and the other day it tells you towards uh, praying uh, towards the other direction. What is this going on? And any time Kibla changes in the society, there is a lot of noise. And whether it is Kaaba or today, what it means for us today is if anybody changes their lifestyle, if anybody changes their values from um, from whatever the society wants and believes and where everybody's going and you turn towards your Islam, uh, towards Islam, you turn towards your the um, the focus of your life towards Islam and you change your lifestyle accordingly, there will be a lot of noise. There'll be people around you who will become upset. There'll be people around you who will create fitness around you. And this is a part of this life. It will happen. And Allah Ta'ala warned the Prophet Sallallahu about this. And uh, before even the fitness were raised, Allah Subhanahu told the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that foolish people will come and say this. And this is what's going to happen. It's almost like we can think that that like a mother explains to a child that my child, you're going to this new place and, you know, this is what's going to happen. And, um, you know, take care of this and everything. And there'll be people and you're going to a marketplace and there are good people and there are bad people there and, you know, protect yourself and everything. Why does the mother do that? Because of the love. So in these ayat, even though Allah Ta'ala is telling the Prophet Sallallahu what is going to happen and how to react to them, there is a lot of love there from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Prophet sallam, and by extension to all of us and a lot of love and a lot of care uh, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there, there's a lot of rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, if we pay attention to that. And uh, the people of Medina, the Jewish leaderships, the Jewish scholars of Medina at that time, they were the people, if we think about um, what opportunities they had at that moment, they were really especially lucky people in the sense that they had been the scholars of the Torah. They had they had seen the they had learned the Torah and they had learned from the Torah about that there there's going to be a final prophet who's going to come and everything and they were the generation who were lucky to see the Torah being fulfilled and the final messenger Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, coming and everything and they had a chance to um, to accept it and everything and they had a chance to be the forerunners because they they understood and every time. Any new command came, like for example, this when this command comes of changing of the of the Qibla, then they would know because in their books it was told that the final prophet was would pray towards the Kaaba. Then uh, they would know that this this was another proof that he is the final prophet. So they were getting proof after proof after proof, which they understood privately more and more and more every time something else came but public and they had this opportunity to follow him to be uh, like Abu Bakr who was like Umar Allah Tara gave them this opportunity this generation of people they were generation before it, them who had died waiting for the final prophet they were the generation who had this opportunity but they did not take this opportunity rather they were foolish and why were they foolish because they were foolish because they didn't recognize what a, this life is going to end anyway they they didn't recognize the opportunity they had in front of them that by following this prophet by joining this mission of this prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what um, they, they would be benefiting not just their akhirah but also their dunya but they were foolish in that and 
not only that, they were foolish enough to oppose it. So even though privately they knew more and more, publicly they op oppose Islam. And that was something really foolish to do as well. And um, uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared the Prophet sallam, and just like that, he prepares us as well when some fitna, something's going to come in our life. And um, another thing is the fitnas are a part of life. They will come. They will come because this life is a test. Allah Ta'ala tells in Surah uh, Mulk as well that he did not create um, us and he, he created death and life for the purpose of what? For the purpose of testing. Even our life itself, this life is a test. So the test will come. And when tests come, and each one of us will have different kind of tests. One thing is when we have those tests, then don't be afraid of those tests. Don't be don't be resistant of those tests because those tests are a time to prove um, what we are made of. Those tests are the time to show to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala because um, what have we learned so far, and are we are we able to stay firm on His teachings? Are we able to stay firm despite if things are not going our way? Do we lose hope? And uh, do we say that things like uh, nothing's going to happen, I'm stuck and things like that? Or do we say, you know what, I don't see it, see the uh, I don't see the light myself, but I know Allah Ta'ala will give me light. Or when something's happen, uh, when some things are really happening well for me and everything, do I start saying things like, um, you know, I, I achieved all of this myself. This was all my hard work and this was all my achievement and everything. And I I didn't uh, I I stop attributing my success to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and um, like like we learn in surah kahf the two people of the um, from the two people um, the one the person had two who had two gardens and he was attribute he was saying that all this look at all this that i have got all these blessings and everything i have worked hard to do this i have achieved this this is all my achievement and everything and subhanallah when he said that uh, what did the other companion reply? He said um, that uh, it, it, to the effect of oh, there's a few, few ayat there, but to the effect that, that he called this shirk. Why was it, it a shirk kind of shirk? Because he's attributing the blessings of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to himself, and the punishment of that was that everything was destroyed. And he, um, the person, then realized a lesson that um, you know when everything got destroyed and everything that Allah Taala is the one who gives and Allah Ta'ala can take away what he has given at any time as well, right? And then um, any success we got, we, should, we get, we should attribute to Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala. And um, so so whether there is a blessing or whether there is um, a test, whether some things are going our way a lot or whether things are going not our way at all, both these things situations are a test and a test is not good or bad, but what are we doing out of it? What are we doing in that situation? What is Allah SWT looking at? Allah SWT is looking at how is how are we going to react in this situation, right? That's our test, right? And um, sometimes what happens is many uh, many people, we start focusing on such minute aspects of um, our apparent actions or rituals of worship and everything that we lose the soul of their action, right? So here, what were people doing? What people were uh, looking so much micro, uh, like like almost in a microscope, wide change of direction, everything, they forgot the very purpose of what is the purpose of worship, first of all, what is the soul of your worship and everything. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us also how to deal with people who look at these um, micro, these, these small, small issues, create these issues, and then create fitna, create trouble, then how to deal with those people. So how to deal with those people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that there are foolish people who will come and who will say these things, why this, why that, why, why is this happening, why is that happening? So what should you do? Should you clarify to the towards them? You know what this was like that, and I was praying like this because. Um, so what should the Prophet do? Should I should he say that you know I was um, looking, I was praying until towards the Baitul Maqdis because this was the way of the previous pro, uh, previous people of the book were doing this, and I would follow their way, and there was no way that had come until then. Everything should he clarify or should he? Uh, or should he apologize that, you know what, like, I'm sorry, it like makes it hard for you and all that stuff. No, nothing of that. Allah SWT is telling him, no, no need to clarify. No need to ap apologize. Instead, Quran teaches us how to deal with fitna and propagandas. No explanations, nothing. Instead, say the real base fact. And what is the real base fact? That Kaaba is, uh, the Qibla is meant to bring the people and community together. But the real worship is the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the one who owns the West and the East. Right? The, we are not we are not worshipping uh, either Baitul Maqdis or the Qibla or, or the Kaaba. As the, um, they are just the Qibla for us. They are just the direction of prayer for us. And the heart of a mu'min is like a compass. You know, like wherever you put it, it just turns back towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, just like when you put a compass there, wherever the north is, the compass will just turn towards 
that. So the heart of a believer is like a compass. Wherever Allah says turn, he will turn there. So uh, another thing that we learn from this is that Kaaba is also just a house made up of bricks and uh, stones and everything right and we do not when we do such that towards when we are praying towards the the kaaba when we made this our kibla when allah Taala made this a kibla for us it does not signify that we are doing such that to the kaaba rather we are doing such that towards the rub of the kaaba uh, right and um even in surah quraish um surah number 106 of the quran ayah number three allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fal rabba bayt. let them worship the lord of this house Right. And so all directions be belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us how to deal with those people They say the base facts. That is the fact that what when they are making these objections and everything, what are they trying to say? It's like, so go um, a believer goes, looks beneath that, looks beneath what is going on. Right. And then Allah Ta'ala teaches us, you, you strike at the base fact, the real thing, which is the basis of, which is the foundation of all these fitnas that they are making, that uh, state the basic fact and don't get into their arguments because that is going to be a waste of your time and energy because they are just looking for argument. Their purpose is to create a propaganda so that you can argue with them and they can defute you in the arguments. They can gang up on you and they can defute you, defeat you in the arguments. But if you don't get into the arguments, then you don't play the game, right? And they're with them and then you you keep on the truth. Right? And that's how um, you pro we protect ourselves from fitness, right? And um, another thing is what it teaches us also is that we should keep Allah SWT in front of us and stay confident in Islam. It, it is good, it is very nice when people who are not Muslim say nice things about the Quran, about Islam, about the Messenger Wasallam. It is really nice, of course, we, we love it when other people say that. But our confidence in Islam should come from it being on truth from our Lord. We should not look for validation from others for the sake of strengthening our confidence in Islam, because other people will go here and there, depending on like they they will whichever the way, way the wind blows, they will turn here and there. But we cannot let our faith turn here and there just because we we have we have roots in Islam, we have roots in Quran. We, a believer is supposed to have a strong faith based on the truth, based on the dalil, not based on what other people are saying or doing. Right. So we need to stay confidence uh, confident in Islam. Another thing is the purpose of qibla is to tie all of us together into one ummah, right? And if we consider other ways that people form groups, there, there are many ways groups are formed in this world. And a lot of times when we see groups, they're either formed on the basis of the color of the skin or the language that people speak or the community that people come from, like which, which geographical region the people come from or the amount of money they have, like the rich people will hang out together and the mid middle class will usually hang out together and everything or the nationality. Like when we go um, to different places, like the Americans would come together or the Indians would come together or wherever or Western or Eastern um, as well. But all these groupings, Allah subhanahu wa teaches us are unnatural. They are they are a part of this life and there's no harm in them, but they are not the the base on which we should form our growth. So Islam doesn't ask anyone to move their location, like to move from um, like if we become a Muslim, if I become a Muslim, I don't need to immigrate to Mecca just because I've become a Muslim. Islam doesn't ask us to have a uniform. Like there is no like a specific way, just like we, just like as soon as I become Muslim, I don't have to like stop dressing the way I dress up. Yes, I, I cover myself and I do all those things, but I can cover myself in whichever way I, long, I, I want, as long as it meets the basic requirements, as long as my clothing is not see-through, as long as it is not super tight, and as long as it covers um, the parts of my body that need to be covered, right? And there's no color which is an Islamic color. Like in a lot of um, communities, like they say that, okay, a green or a white or this and that. No, no color is Islamic color. There's no, if we look at the, the accessories, like there are the different accessories that different people wear to show that they are a part of a certain religion. For example, like um, in Hindu culture, they would have a tilak or a sindoor or uh, things like that. But in Islam, there is no accessory that makes you more Muslim than another Muslim, right? It's like um, we need to cover up, we need to do that. But like, and, and yes, um, you can identify a Muslim from the way they're dressed and everything, but there's no specific um, location or gender or financial status or looks or nationality or social status or power that is there for Muslim. So what what unites then the Muslim? What is common amongst Muslims? So the the thing uniting the Muslims is la ilaha illallah and 
the the qibla is the one point that is uniting all of them so that point that unites all the muslims that point is called the qibla right and um, what unites them is their aqida their their thinking and their um, you know sabghat allah we learn another part of, um, another ayah in surah baqarah itself that they color themselves into the color of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning like just like if um, if a color was like uh, if a deep deep color was poured upon a cloth the cloth would take that color right similarly when uh, when a believer immerses themselves into their love of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, tries to follow the guidance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then it's almost like we color ourselves so you, like in the color of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everything we look and see and do now is through that lens of what will be pleasing to my lord and how can i serve my lord more and what what is the purpose of this unity um, the purpose of this unity, this qibla, is that if we imagine a hall, right? In, in a hall, it's a time for prayer, and um, suddenly there's a time for prayer. And if anybody was, if everybody could pray in whichever direction they want, now will there be chaos in the hall? Because if everybody, if the hall is full of, let's say, 300 people, and it's time for prayer, and anybody can pray in any direction, then there'll be so much chaos because, and then people would not be able to fit together. Um, people would be like, um, you know, like people would be hitting each other while they're praying and everything. But when everybody faces the same direction, what happens? Everything becomes orderly. There's no chaos, and there, there are clear lines, they're clear in rows, and then people pray in that and everything, right? And through that, what we are learning, we are learning discipline, right? And when the whole ummah is turning towards one side, just one side to pray their salah, what happens then? The the focus of prayer stays towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Our focus is not like, okay, which direction I am in, or this and that and everything, or like, who am I? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not like, um, uh, you know, hitting the other person with my elbow or this and that and everything. The folk, Because everybody's in the same direction, it is easier for everybody and then believers strengthen each other by by being next to each other right so it's like when other believers are there and we are all standing in the same saf we are all standing in the same um straight line and then we are praying towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then uh, it helps us to concentrate now some people what they do is they focus so much on like the the precise direction and uh, they use the compass and put a straight line and everything but they forget other areas of our lives. So, you know, the Rabb and Rasul who have taught us the Qibla of worship, they have also taught us the Qibla of marriages, of meeting other people, of dealing in our businesses, of family relationships, of life, of death, of eating, of sleeping. Right? Allah SWT has taught us uh, through the Prophet ﷺ, the Qibla, the way to do, the direction of doing all these things. How should we do these things? Right? And um, so when we keep the soul of worship in check in in when we remember that that to allah belongs everything and allah can change me in whichever day, direction they want and when we accept that that's when our personality becomes that of what allah SWT wants which is samayana wa atana, right like we hear and we obey right and that's uh that's the 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 quality of a believer and it also shows us that the direction of a qibla also shows us that worship has both individual as well as social and collective aspects. Meaning what is individual? Like if I'm doing dhikr, that is mostly individual dhikr that I'm doing. Or if I'm fasting, that is my individual worship. I'm fasting, um, uh, then I'm, I'm doing this individual ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are social and collective aspects of um, of worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. For example, salah, when I'm praying in a congregation, in a jama'ah, or when we go for hajj, Right? We are, there is a social and collective discipline that has to be maintained and we have to have a uh, sabr with people who might not be behaving in the best possible way. And then we have to uh, do things, you know, like one of um, uh, one of my friends, uh, she was sending her children for Hajj. She sent her children for Hajj this year, but they had to go by themselves. They, she has three boys and they went by themselves. Uh, and they're, they're young boys, but they had to go um, by themselves. And she said, what um, our elders told us and what I'm telling you as well is when you're going for Hajj, you have to pack lots and lots and lots and lots of bags of sabr with you. You have to have lots of sabr because a lot of because if you can imagine like millions of people concentrated in one small area, 
um, at a certain time and they have to move from one place to another and it is hot at um, it's very very hot in the hot months and uh, so th there is uh, and there's a lot of dehydration there's a lot of uh, um, weakness that people are fighting at the same time there's such a huge amount of people moving from one place to another there's a lot of logistical issues that are going to happen there's and there's all kinds of people from all over the world so there's going to be uh, people there's be, going to be a lot of politics going on in in, in, in any organization there are a lot of people there will be some politics going on there'll be a lot of these things so in those things what will we need to do we will need to do a lot of summer we we'll need to do a lot of um uh, so for example one thing that she's saying what happened was when they went there like a uh, lot of places when the the places that they're booked the the hotels that were booked a lot of couples were mismatched like like uh the rooms were made like uh, this wife with this husband and this this uh yeah, so the rooms were it was it got messed up in for one group of people and what they could do at that time was they could be like oh my god these people they don't even know this and it's a hush time and you should have organized this thing better and this and they could have done that but um what some people did was one lady just uh called uh it like joked about it and said you know what this is not the bloke i married so i'm sorry i can't stay with this one like i have to stay with so so they, they made a joke about it and lightened the mood about it and then it's like it's okay we will sort it out it, it's just going to take like everybody's tired from their flight and everything and things are messed up but then they're still being um being accommodating about it in that sense and then what they did was all people decided together that what we we'll do is we'll have three four rooms or we just because they have to decide it quickly as well because they have to um they have to settle down and then they are there are things to be done there, there is worship to be done there are things to be done um during the hajj so what they decided was okay what we will do is all the women stay in these three four rooms and all the men stay in these three rooms so that we can just get it get on with it at least right so there's a lot of adjustments that have to be made and everything and a believer uh whichever direction whatever comes in life whatever allah ta'ala brings in our life uh, a believer moves accordingly okay allah what uh, once a believer understands what allah wants them to do they, they do it they don't like uh, uh they don't create fitness they don't create uh unnecessary trouble and everything but the quality of um and a believer knows that uh, before a believer also knows that every storm that comes is comes for a limited time there's no storm that lasts forever right so every every storm that comes will finish in its own time right and when we um when we come towards the deen and the more we come towards the deen and the more we are trying to be um you know the people around us notice and it people it, it irritates people who are uh, who are very much away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? And and when we come on, come towards the deen, there, there are fitnas and there are propagandas that will pop up against us. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, don't be afraid. It it, it it could be feel scary, but don't be afraid. Allah ta'ala is with you. And uh, the quality of uh, the people who do like, uh, you know, for every little, little thing, they want they want to oppose everything. They want to create, a, um, they, they want to create a friction. They want to create a, a scandal out of everything. They want to create a big deal out of every, they want to create a mountain out of molehill for every little thing. And they want to, um, you know, like, uh, they want to do etras on everything. They want to be like, why is this? Why is that? And why is this? And why is that? That is the way of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls it, foolish people, right? And, um, a believer is not foolish um, and uh, so first thing is that when somebody says things against us then don't repeat what they're saying don't clarify don't be upset don't cry don't be angry be quiet let the other person speak listen to the whole thing and um, and you know like uh, don't, don't say while they're speaking something and then uh, respond with what is the truth and the base of it what is the base of it don't get into the branches of the thing get to the root of the problem right that's what Allah is teaching us here whether it is um, for us whether it is something in a family politics whether it is at workplaces whether it is um, any place where there is a lot of politics politics how does politics uh, work politics always works with a lot of um a uh, lot of words a lot of like bayan a lot of like uh he said this he said this and this is wrong and this is right and this is this this is that a lot of debating is what makes polit makes up politics a lot of debating a lot of uh, unnecessary discussions a lot of calling names to uh, to other people and everything so uh, allah is teaching us don't don't get into that don't get into petty fights don't get, don't make your conversations and don't let other people don't let the foolish ones make your conversations into um you know a wrestling match or or something and uh, what you should do is just change the topic 
and everything for the first change the topic and go right to the root of the problem or just change the topic. So, for example, if somebody uh, comes to our place and they try to let's say they're backbiting about somebody else or they're saying like, oh, you know what? You should have done this and this is wrong or this is right. And they're going on and on about something which is not uh, not correct or not not nice or something. What we can do is uh, a simple way is just to change the topic. It's like, oh, will you, would you like to eat something? Let me go and get you something. You know, rather than getting into those discussions about uh, and creating trouble for yourself, we should do that. And before these ayat, Allah Ta'ala told us about uh, different people who were tested, like Adam alayhi salam was tested, um, uh, then Ibrahim alayhi salam was tested and he passed the test. Adam alayhi salam was tested, uh, he made a mistake, but then through him Allah Ta'ala told us how to make up. And then he told us about Bani Israel who they made the mistakes and then after making mistakes, they became even more arrogant and kept falling more and more and more. And now the Muslim woman is being told that you are the continuation um, of uh, humanity and you will be tested as well. You are the like the final soldiers of the same battle, right? There's the same uh, thing that is going to happen. And um, recognize that you are, not, you are not the first ones to be chosen. And to get the status of Imanma, first you have to go through tests. And once you like, when did... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called Ibrahim alayhi salam and ummah in himself. When he did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him uh, the imamat and he became a khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That then Allah ta'ala made him the khalil. Um, you know, like uh, that when he was tested and he stood firm in those tests, he had to prove himself. And we will have to prove ourselves as well. It's not just saying, you know, like there is there is saying like um, uh, this this Islam is not easy. Yes, it is not easy. There, there are things which won't be easy. And uh, we will be tested, but we are not the first ones. And but when we stay firm with the tests, that's when we will prove ourselves. We uh, um, don't feel that we have a special label just because we have become Muslim. And that is, was a thinking of Bani Israel that they have a special label just because they're Bani Israel. Right? And we realize and we understand through this changing of the Qibla uh, by not being foolish is to understand that we don't own Islam. Islam owns us. Right. And um, uh, just like um, Ibrahim and Islam follow things, we will follow things as well. And um, Another thing is that why are these people being called foolish? Because the Munafikeen or the people of the Mac uh, people who were um, the Mushrikeen in Makkah at that time and the Jewish scholarships, all the people, if you look at all of them, what they all claimed to follow Ibrahim alayhi salam. Like Mushrikeen in Makkah said they were following the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam by taking care of people who come for Hajj and doing everything. That was the basis of their economy. And they said that they are the real followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam. The Bani Israel said they are the real followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam. They are the people who the prophets came from, the books came to them and everything. And they are the, the real followers of Ibrahim alayhi salam. But they were claiming to follow Ibrahim alayhi salam, but rejecting the very prophet who was calling them to the ways of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, how foolish is that uh, actually? And they, they, uh, all these people, right? Like uh, the hypocrites, the Jews, the Christians, the mushrik. It's not all of them who would say this. Allah ta'ala is saying the foolish from amongst them will say this. So not everyone, uh, again, uh, not everyone is uh, painted in the same picture, but the foolish amongst them, they will create a scandal amongst them. Not everybody would talk like that, but Allah is telling the Prophet the foolish amongst them will come to you and they will say that, right? And um, if they thought that Islam was wrong, then this should not have bothered them, right? Because like which direction you're praying towards, why did it bother them so much that they had to create a whole issue out of it and everything? Because they knew that Islam is, and turning the, uh, the change of Qibla, uh, even exposed to them even more that this prophet is the truth and it really bothered them but they could not do anything about it and um and they understood islam is the truth and that's why it bothered them even more and when some somebody gets bothered even more and more and more that's when they create more and more and more and more fitna as well right and if we look at it that uh, for us as muslims um by turning us towards one Qibla by giving us the Kaaba, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has turned us towards a straight path. And that is a huge rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because um, if we even look at the, the Jews at that time, they are not combined in praying towards Jerusalem, even today. Right there, this practice started after Sulaiman al Islam built um, Masjid al Aqsa and they, they prayed towards that direction. But even now, many different groups of Jews are divided on which direction they pray to. And some Christians uh, groups, they pray towards the east no matter what. They would just pray towards the east. 
uh, all the time. And uh, some Jew, the Jews and the Christians, although they follow the same book, they 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 are facing the different directions within Masjid Al Aqsa. Right, one is praying towards the one side, another is praying towards the other side. Right, and but for us as Muslims, Allah Taala has combined it for us that all Muslims around the world, whether no matter what group we call ourselves to be, but there are a few things that are common amongst every Muslim, even if they are um, not united in other things. We have one Quran that we believe in, and we have one Qibla towards which we face when we are praying our prayers, and that is something that unites all of us despite our differences, despite the kind of differences that we have. Also, that um, by the change of Qibla, what is happening is that before this, Jews believed that Jewish scholarship, they believed especially that they are special people and they don't actually call people towards their religion. They 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 are very exclusivist in that sense. They, they feel that you have to be born into it and by being born into it, you are um, a proper Jew and everything. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified here that this is a religion of, his religion is the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam. And this is an international religion. It's open to everyone. It has equal access for everyone. This religion is not inherited. It is not, it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives Islam to whoever he wants. It may be Ibrahim alayhi salam's parents were not Muslims. His father or, and, or some argue his uncle, they were, they were building idols in fact. But Allah Ta'ala gave Ibrahim alayhi salam Islam. And same goes for all of us. There will be people throughout until now, until the day of judgment, there'll be people who will be born in non-Muslim families, but Allah Ta'ala will guide them to Islam. There'll be people who will be born in Muslim families who are not, um, not following Islam, uh, yet Allah Ta'ala will bring them to Islam. And there'll be people who will be born in Muslim families, yet they will go away from Islam. May Allah Ta'ala protect all of our people and keep us steadfast on his deen. And then Allah Ta'ala tells us in the next ayah that he made us the middle nation. And uh, Bani Israel before this had been given many, many chances, you know, but it is now the final decision. Now that the honor and respect that belong to Bani Israel is now being given to the Muslims. So it's like, a, it's like a symbolic change of Ummah. So, um, you know, like um, uh, people who are Fasik, people who like to create, Problems will keep problems, uh, keep uh, creating problems. But if religious people keep getting involved in little, little issues, what will happen? Humanity will suffer. Right? And um, so when we become a middle nation, when we truly embrace becoming in a middle nation, what does that mean? A middle nation, um, so first of all, Vasat means it's a middle portion of something. And um, if you look at it, most, um, you know, we, we when say things like happy medium or the golden mean or the point of moderation, the most valuable part of things are usually their middle part. Like, for example, if we look at um, the middle part of the body, what is the most valuable part of the body? The heart, which is right in the middle. If we look at um, any fruit, the most delicious part of the fruit is the middle of the fruit. The most um, uh, valuable part of a building or a castle is the middle of it. The most um, delicious part of a bread is the middle of it, the softest part and everything. If you look at a jewelry, the middle part, like if you look at a necklace or something, the middle part of it where we put the pendant or everything is like the most precious part of it usually, right? So, so middle part usually of most things is the most protected, is the nicest and the most valuable and the strongest part, right? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls us uh, umatan uh, wasat, uh, meaning that we are a balanced people. We are supposed to be balanced people. By definition, we cannot be extremist people. And uh, when people don't understand what balance means, then they look at uh, um, and they look at this ummah, they, 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 they get these ideas. Right? But when we, we become a living example of a balanced people, then we truly follow Islam, right? And uh, why are why are Muslims considered extremists today? The problem is at both ends, right? Like there's there's a lot of propaganda as well, and there's also Muslims that are not following Islam. They call themselves Muslim, but they're not following Islam, and that's why these um, propagandas are uh, today against us, even um, taking ground, right? And how are we a middle nation in in many many senses? First is that we are um, you know like a, a link between Allah Subhanahu wa Taala and the rest of Ummah, so, right? Like the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the Ummah that is a link between the all the other nations, all the other Ummah that came and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. We are, um, and we are also middle. We are also in the middle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the rest of mankind. Meaning, the Prophet until 
the beginning of mankind, um, from the beginning, from the very beginning of mankind, Allah Subhanahu wa sent prophets to give the message of Islam to the people, right? So he he sent uh, he, he sent Adam alayhi salam, and then to every nation he kept sending prophets until the last prophet, uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Now after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, there is no more prophets to come. But the work of prophet or the work that the prophets had to do has not stopped. So who takes care of that work now? That work is now given to the ummah of the Prophet. This is the only ummah that now has to do the job together. They have to come together and do the job that the prophets had to do, meaning um, they have to give glad tidings to those who believe in Allah Subhanahu wa They have to warn the people who are not away from Allah Subhanahu wa and bring them to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is our job. That is what we have to try to do. It, it is a difficult job. That's why Allah Ta'ala chose select people to do this job. And today, Whoever Allah Ta'ala has chosen to be Muslims, Allah Ta'ala has chosen them and given them this job. But if we just like to keep the title and don't like to embrace that job, then we are um, we are be doing an injustice to ourselves and also to the rest of the humanity. Because when Allah Ta'ala has given us this message, then what is the purpose of receiving this message? Now we are supposed we are the link between the Prophet Sallallahu and the rest of the mankind. Because uh, the rest of all people who come after the Prophet ﷺ has come to this earth is are the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu The difference is some have accepted his dawa and some are yet to accept his dawa, right? So whoever accepts his dawa is become becomes his um, uh, becomes his ummah, and then now we have to carry on this position. So we are the link between the Prophet ﷺ and them. And when you know, like it is the haq of other people around us to receive this message. When we have been given this message. We have to first show it through our actions, through our how we live our life. That way we have to give, that's why we give dawah to tell people what Islam is. Another way is tell them um, what the message of Islam is. But when we don't do any of them, and if you look at many Muslims today, either they're, neither are they following themselves, nor are they giving, they're actively engaged in giving the message of Islam. This is our primary duty. Allah Ta'ala has called us to this, he has made us Muslims and given us this duty. Now it is your job to, learn about Islam and to teach about Islam, to to share the message of Islam with people, to call people towards Islam. And if we don't do this duty through either our words or our actions, different people can do it in different ways, depending on how Allah has blessed each one of us with what resources, what talents, what uh, what thing he has blessed, what amount of knowledge he has blessed all of us with. But if we don't do any of this, then we are doing an injustice and people on the Day of Judgment will hold a a, a, a thing against us, you know, that that we did not give them the message. They, they'll complain against us that I was this person's neighbor. I was this person's friend. I was this person's colleague. And uh, she used to be such a good friend and we used to be such good friends and she did not tell me about Islam. Right. So first, what we need to do is um, by saying, Allah says that we made you. This is Allah's decision to have made you and me Muslim. First thing we realize is the honor that Allah Ta'ala has given to us. First by making us human beings and then by making us Muslims, Allah Ta'ala has given us a huge honor. And there is nothing in this world which can compare, no honor in this world which can compare to that honor. Right. And um, by uh, honor also Allah Ta'ala has given us this mean, this, this responsibility to be on justice and to do justice and to um, it is the job of the Muslim Ummah to spread justice, to spread um, this deen around the world and everything. Right. And another thing is that we are balanced in our Aqeedah. For example, if you see about Isa alayhi salam, what did the Jews, uh, Jews thought of him as a, a child of Zina? Um, and uh, they think that they killed him. Right. Whereas the Christians consider him the son of God, Astaghfirullah, and they think that he died for other people's sins. Right? They, they are, and the two, if you look at both these two groups, they are they're following the same book, the Old Testament, um, and yet they're divided about the uh, source so differently divided what muslims believe is right muslims are between them they they consider we consider we love isa alayhi salam we respect him and yet we consider him as a prophet of god we don't consider him as a son of god and uh, if you look at hindus for example hinduism for example there there are there there are thousands upon thousands of objects of worship everything becomes an object of worship everything that you are either scared of or you want something from becomes an object of worship 
right? But uh, what did Islam do? Islam taught that, uh, you know, this, these are directions that we face. And even the sun and moon are the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we don't need to scare, be afraid of them. People used to be afraid of them and that's why they used to worship them. We don't need to be scared of them. They are just a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like us. And Allah ta'ala has made us them for, um, you know, he, he's made made them, um, you know, like uh, listen to us and uh, made them for our service, like in that sense. If you look at uh, the Sahabas through all this training, through becoming Ummat al what they, what they they got to the stage was they presented themselves in every situation that Allah Taala asked them to present themselves. As opposed to Musa al salam's companions, they refused to fight when uh, he asked them that Allah, it is Allah's command that we should go and fight. And what else are we in the middle of? If you look at desires, if somebody could li live a life of too much desires, and there's another person who lives a life of monasticism. I'll have no desire. In this world, but Allah Subhanahu wa tells us no balance between the two. Um, you have desires, but you fulfill them in a halal way. A balance between um, Muslim is a has a balance between dunya and akhirah. He's in the middle of both dunya and akhirah. He takes care of both dunya and akhirah. He's not like I just want akhirah and I'll just leave this world, or he just don't d goes into this dunya and forgets the akhirah. He's he takes care of both of them. Right. Um, we learn bo both deen and dunya. We are in the middle of amal and ibadat. So we, we 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 do worship and we do actions as well. Right. Other actions as well. And we involved in this world as well. We are also middle nation and we have we have a balance between theory and practice. We learn and then we practice it in our lives as well. Right. And uh, so the Muslim um, uh, Ummah who really followed them, the people who came before us who really followed, and even today, people who really follow the teachings of Islam are, for example, the religious scholars who know a lot about the world as well, or there are scientists who who know a lot about religion as well. Right. So uh, Islam teaches us to be in the middle of um, that. Too. And even in terms of individual versus society, uh, Islam teaches a balance that, yes, you have individual worship and then you have uh, balance with the society, like you do sadaqah, you do uh, zakat, and it's also if you look at the Islamic system of um, uh, economic management and everything, there is it, it's not a socialism and but it's not capitalism either, right? It's uh, it takes care of both the leaders and those uh, who are being led, and what uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam was called an ummah in one person, right? And what is Muslim ummah? We are the ummah of the last nabi, the one who called to the ways of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Right now, uh, Allah Ta'ala has given us this honor and through our worship, through uh, our worship, which is our spiritual food, we get this energy. And now we need to utilize this energy. Salah and worship will give us this energy. Now Allah Ta'ala is teaching us, okay, now you got all this energy. You don't fuel your car with petrol and then just leave it in the garage. You now take it somewhere. Now you don't just sit with it. So uh, Allah Ta'ala will teach us discipline. He'll, he'll enhance our spirituality through our conversations with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. He will train us through our salah, through our fasting, through our um, zakat and everything. But now that is training and now we have a mission to do as well. And that mission is where you need to utilize this energy. So we'll keep getting our energy from our dhikr, our salah, our worship. And this is like a cycle that, uh, this is like a circle that, uh, that a believer keeps going. He keeps having this energy and then he keeps utilizing this energy. Then goes again, gets more energy and utilizes more energy, right? So what we need to do is we need to keep getting this, uh, keep involving in our personal worships and then be an ummah that takes this, uh, takes this message ahead. We have to convey this message to other people. However, Allah Ta'ala has given each one of us different uh, different um, capacities and we need to utilize these capacities, right? And here what happened was when the Qibla changed and all these, um, um, you know, like, um, why did Allah Ta'ala change this Qibla? For example, he could have made this first, just uh, when the Wahi started coming, Allah Ta'ala could have, and when uh, um, the Prophet ﷺ was taught the Salah, Allah Ta'ala could have taught him right away that, okay, face the Qibla, uh, the Qibla would be Kaaba and face that. But why did Allah Ta'ala let, and nothing, in Allah's commands is, um, you know, like is without hak. Even a leaf moves and Allah knows about it. So Allah Ta'ala um, knew and Allah Ta'ala let the Muslims pray for all of this time towards uh, Baitul Muslim. Why was that? 
in this was a test and it was a huge test. For example, the people who were Muhajirin who had moved from Mecca to Medina, including the Prophet ﷺ, there was a huge test now that the uh, when they are facing the Baytul Maqdis, um, the way he has not come yet and they're supposed to pray towards Baytul Maqdis, there's a huge test because they have to put their back towards the Kaaba. And are they going to follow the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though their heart wants them to turn towards the Qibla, uh, towards the Kaaba? It was a huge test for them. And when the Qibla changed again, then people from Medina, there were people from Jewish leadership who had converted to Islam. There were people who accepted Islam right away, like Abdullah ibn Islam. Um, so they, for them now, it was a test because all their life they have been praying towards Baytul Maqdis. Now they have to turn and pray towards the Kaaba and towards put their back towards Baytul Maqdis. So in that was a huge test for them as well. So through these, through these uh, changing of Qibla, Allah Ta'ala, all these, um, the Muslims were of that time, they were tested and they were tested. It was a very big test for them, right? And in that uh, test, uh, uh, they proved, in, in fulfilling those commands of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, they proved that uh, they are worthy of, and they, they are the people of Samayana Wa Ta'ala. They are the people who are, who are doing the, who are following the messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, right? And, uh, um, also, in turning towards the Qibla, which is the Kaaba now, the Muslims now, when they turn towards the Qibla, uh, which is the Kaaba now, but the Kaaba at that moment was full of idols. So now, the Muslims, when they are turning towards the Kaaba and praying, now they know they cannot they cannot keep praying towards the Kaaba and let the idols be there, right? Because so now Muslims have a mission. So suddenly the Muslims have been given a mission, and the mission is to clean up the Kaaba and establish it as a place of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this task was difficult, except for those guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Uh, because um, this means that they had to engage in offensive. Now, it was not just defensive. They had to engage in an offensive, and they have to work towards removing the idols because this is um, this is dhulm, which is happening, right? The biggest dhulm is shirk, and they had to now work towards removing the shirk and that is their job Allah Ta'ala is giving them their job and um, we can spend our life on different things we can spend our life on fully filling our own needs and there is nothing wrong with that but then we can make it our focus our our families our careers we can we can make them our focus but Allah Ta'ala is teaching us that is not the focus of your life the focus of your life is um, to spread this message and everything else is on the side to it. So, so don't lose sight of your main purpose. By changing of the Qibla, Allah Ta'ala is telling us all of that. And um, at the end of this, Allah Ta'ala says that he is Raufur Rahim at the end of this ayah, which means that he has made us, me and you, a part of this Ummah of the final Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By doing that, that is a huge mercy and huge Rahmah of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala upon me and you and anybody who becomes a Muslim or is born in a Muslim family and accepts Islam and starts practicing Islam. Because why? Because through this, Allah Ta'ala has saved us from the errors of the Jews and Christians, you know, wrangling about the East and West and concerning the, their Qibla. And he has he has saved us from all those arguments and he has given us a clear Qibla. And um, if you look at it, um, how uh, Injil that came, the, the New Testament, it was not separate from the Old Testament. It was not separate from the Torah. It was explanation of the laws, of, uh, of the wisdom in the laws um, and teachings of the Torah. So Isa alayhi salam, he tried to explain the real spirit of religion and made Torah binding on its followers. Yet today, a lot of the followers of Isa alayhi salam, they would just say that we don't need to follow all these rules anymore. Yes, pork was haram, maybe for them. Pork was haram even for them. But they would say, um, no, we don't need to follow it anymore because Isa alayhi salam, um, they say he already paid for the sin, so we are not, we are all clear. We don't need to do anything. Right. And after telling this, Allah Ta'ala now gives the command in the next ayah that uh, he saw the Nabi alayhi salam um, used to look up and he would he would want the Qibla to be changed and he was sad about it. He wanted to pray towards that, but he didn't even say that. And it shows the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards the Prophet. And um, when we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we should love the one that whom he loves. Right. So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that uh, he looked up and he kept looking up and uh, 
feeling that Allah Taala know knew what was in his heart, and then he changed the qibla. It, it, what this also teaches us is that it is permissible to look at the sky when we are making duas, right? And uh, it is permissible to ponder over Allah's creation and. Uh, both uh, of them we can do while looking at the sky, but we don't look at sky at the time of our namaz, uh, at the time of our salah. To look up at um, the time of salah when we are praying our salah is a matter um, is considered disrespectful to the salah, right? So that's why we are told during our salah, during our um, actual salah, we are told to look at a certain points and we need to follow that. But other than that, when we are making dua, even after the salah or at any other time, then it is permissible to look up. Also, it tells us that the Rabb is one who is in the heavens. Our Allah, uh, our Rabb, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in the heavens, is above the heavens. And all, if you look at it, all shirk comes from when we look for God on earth or under the earth, right? When we look for God in any anything which is on the earth or under the earth, but when we understand that Rabb is the one who's above us, then it takes away, the, the it, it cuts away from the roots of this shirk. And... Um, just like we know that Allah knew the heart and desires of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala also knows our heart and our desires, right? And um, you know, like um, uh, so, even um, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knew that even after this command has come, and even after people know, even after knowledge came, there are certain people who will agree and certain people who will not agree. But Allah Taala made this changing of qibla as a means of showing it to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that who is, uh, who are the true followers and who are not. May Allah Ta'ala make us of the people who are true followers of um, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and His Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah Ta'ala make us of those people who turn their direction whenever, towards whichever direction, who are flexible, who are, uh, who give ourselves in the hand of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, who say that, um, um, you know, like, uh, who say that in uh, salati uh, wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen when my life and death and my um, my my prayer and my sacrifice are all for Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, then He moves me whichever way He wants to move me and I will move. I will not be attached to the um, a direction wherever I feel the most comfortable in. In fact, we will at many times throughout our lives, we will be we will have to move out of our comfort zones. May Allah make us of those people who are who are comfortable to move out of those comfort zones, who don't look at, um, for example, uh, knowledge as just uh, the the name of the qualifications or this degree or that degree, who understand that um, foolish are the people. There could be people who who are who have all the degrees of the world. Uh, who are who are PhDs and who are this and that and yet they Allah Taala calls them foolish. Then what is the point of all that education? Um, the 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 one person who did not have any uh, qualifications of this world of the education of this world yet he was the most intelligent. May Allah Taala make us of those people who follow our Nabi Sallallahu who understand true intelligence. May Allah Taala protect us from being the foolish. May Allah Taala make us of those people that He's pleased with, and may Allah Taala just He as He united us as sisters in Islam in this world. May He reunite us as sisters in Islam under the shade of His throne when there'll be no shade except His. And then once again on the day of judgment, um, and once again in Jannatul Firdaus, Inshallah. Uh, may Allah Ta'ala accept our coming together and forgive our shortcomings. Any goodness that comes from this or any other place uh, where the work of his deen is being done is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because all goodness belongs to him and him alone. And any mistakes in this are mine because I'm human and open to mistakes. May Allah ta'ala forgive and accept despite our mistakes. Subhanaka Allahumma, ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka, 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 wa natubu ilayhi.